Welcome back. Now, rubber stamping the NHI bill will have damaging consequences for South Africa for generations to come. This is a stern warning that comes from big business as far as the piece of health legislation is concerned. Last week, the National Council of Provinces Select Committee on Health and Social Services adopted the bill without any amendments, despite submissions from the public. Organized business wants the bill to be relooked at and for those submissions to be considered. Martin Kingston, who's chair for B4SA, joins us with greater detail around these concerns involving processes uh, related to the adoption of the bill as well. Martin, it's a pleasure. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you, Nonatandra, and to your viewers. Martin, initially, actually, uh, business had raised concern around Section 33 uh, of the bill, uh, but now uh, we're also raising concerns about the process, uh, the procedure that's been followed uh, with regards to the NHI. Take us through uh, these concerns, please. Well, exactly as you said, uh, the public was asked to comment on the latest draft of the bill. In fact, it's the same draft that went to the National Assembly. Uh, there were two months of hearings in all nine provinces, not just business, uh, business for South Africa, but business institutions and fora, but also a huge number of other stakeholders uh, commented and uh, uh, gave their input. Uh, at the hearings themselves, which lasted for less than 45 minutes, uh, that's the select committee of the NCOP. I have to say that not one of those comments was taken through, including from four provinces that had mandates to give detailed uh, comments. The NDOH, the National Department of Health itself, had given uh, uh, observations and made observations. So the uh, legislation as it was tabled in front of the NCOP was rubber stamped through the process. Uh, we're very concerned about that. We think that uh, a participatory constitutional democracy requires a uh, significant consideration of meaningful input that's been given. We just cannot say when it goes to the NCOP tomorrow for consideration that that process has taken place. It's not just that we have concerns, it's that there are a variety of concerns from all quarters that haven't been taken into consideration, as a consequence of which we have uh, a legislative approach uh, which is fundamentally flawed, and indeed an NHI bill uh, that is fundamentally flawed, and in our opinion, unimplementable and is setting itself up for legal challenges uh, from now until such time as those those issues are properly addressed. Martin, I must ask you, uh, you know, if we know why there'd be such a rush uh, to get to this uh, bill through, considering the fact that it requires the buy-in of so many stakeholders, it's probably best to take your time uh, to ensure that you, you have adequate uh, buy-in. Well, I think we all accept uh, that the uh, healthcare system is in crisis at the moment, like many other aspects of our uh, social economy. We understand that, and it needs to be fixed. Uh, but we don't want to be in a situation where we act in haste and we repent at leisure, which is exactly what we're going to find uh, here. Uh, the NDOH itself accepts that this is a very lengthy process, and uh, I would have thought, and business believes, uh, that therefore we should be very careful in how we consider these issues. We should be thoughtful in our approach. We should crowd in all of those who can provide skills, expertise, and resources to ensure that we do provide a healthcare system uh, which is universal in nature, uh, which provides uh, accessible, affordable for those who have to pay for it. And indeed, NHI uh, presumes that for primary health care, it will be free. I mean, somebody has to foot the bill. We need to put in place the institutional framework, the systems, the processes. We have clarity, I have to say, on none of that at the moment. All it is doing is uh, creating extreme anxiety, uh, not only within the private sector, but more broadly as to how we can uh, take such, a, I would have to say, cavalier approach uh, to what is an absolutely essential uh, social good and social need. I'm also wondering uh, if you're at all concerned as business about uh, the centralization of healthcare in South Africa. We have centralized electricity. We have uh, centralized logistics. It hasn't quite worked uh, the way that we had hoped, uh, Martin. I'm wondering if this is all a concern uh, for big business as well. Um, and part of, uh, you know, the, the recommendations brought forward from big business, uh, you know, challenge this idea of centralizing healthcare. Well, I have to say, and Alejandro, it's not just big business, it's all of business. I mean, I think that we are concerned uh, that as a country, when we have many multiple crises that are confronting us, whether it's energy, whether it's healthcare, whether it's transport and logistics, or education, whether it's water, the list goes on, 
uh, that we need to be very clear in addressing those challenges, that we've identified the problem, uh, that we've determined appropriate ways of dealing with those problems, that we've harnessed the skills, capabilities and experience that's available. Uh, and that includes, by the way, the private sector, uh, where appropriate, that we regulate suitably. If the private sector is to be involved, of course, we must make sure that there's a suitable regulatory uh, environment in which they can be held to account, as government itself must be held to account. But as you say, whether it's the Road Accident Fund or the UIF, uh, these are institutions that already exist. We've seen the danger of centralizing uh, these processes. Uh, we see no good reason to do it. In fact, we think that there are many interventions that could take place already whilst we are seeking to achieve the objective of universal health care, uh, which uh, uh, could alleviate much of the pressure on the system. And it's not just about finding the money. Finding the money, obviously, is absolutely essential. You know, by the NDOH's own estimate, using 12-year-old figures, uh, the bill was at least 200 billion rand per annum. Uh, many people think it's close to 400 to 500 billion rand per annum, which can only be addressed by raising taxes. The Minister of Finance and National Treasury have made our fiscal circumstances absolutely crystal clear uh, to everyone. Uh, we need to be uh, very cautious and prudent about uh, where, we where we procure the funding and how we spend it. Uh, doing all of that uh, in a rush can only lead to the wrong outcomes in our opinion. But if I go back to your original question, we cannot have a situation uh, where actually, as I said, in a participatory democracy, nobody's views, I don't just mean business's views, nobody's views are taken into consideration in legislation, which with some small amendments, we believe can make, broadly speaking, uh, fit for purpose. We're not suggesting that the legislation should be scrapped. We're saying it should be amended appropriately, taking into consideration uh, the views and the opinions that have already been received over a two-year period. So, Martin, I must ask you, of course, this matters before Parliament tomorrow. If it goes ahead uh, and passes, what then, uh, you know, for, uh, like you're saying, the, the process and the procedures just haven't been followed the way that they should? Well, then, of course, uh, and that, that is the prerogative of the NCOP. They can decide. We've written to the chair of the NCOP. We have written to the deputy president uh, as the leader of government business. Uh, it's their prerogative to go ahead uh, tomorrow. Uh, the next step, of course, then would be for the president to sign the legislation into law once he has applied his mind uh, as to the constitutionality uh, of the legislation. And I have no doubt uh, that many people will seek to intervene at that stage, again, drawing the same issues and others uh, to his attention. And even if it were signed into law, we can only assume, and some of that process has already started, uh, that there will be uh, many legal challenges uh, to the legislation uh, which will tie everybody up uh, for an extended period of time, uh, consuming resources that as a country we can uh, ill afford, taking up senior people's attention, particularly in government. It would seem to me that it is a much more prudent, sensible uh, and responsible thing to do uh, to ensure that there aren't those types of uh, unintended consequences, simply to be able to say that we've passed legislation that cannot be implemented. Martin, thank you for taking us through this. I think uh, lots of concerns coming from different uh, parts of the country, and hopefully uh, we'll have a resolution uh, sooner than we expected. That was before SA Chair. That's Martin Kingston. Mm -hmm.